Hi everybody, welcome back to this STM32F1 quick review and example for the GPIO library. The example that we are going to use in this video is inspired from the STM32F1 tutorial where we created the GPIO library from scratch. So if you are interested and would like to see more about how we created this library, you can find the link in the description below. As usual, the code that we are going to review today is available on GitHub and the link is in the description below. Also, the language that we are going to use is a C language and the program that we are going to use for coding, um, building and loading the code in the STM32F1 is the KL version number 5. Okay, the hardware that we are going to use for this example are the STM32F1 or aka the Blue Pill and also we are going to use a 220 ohm capacitor, a red LED and a push button. Let's jump quickly in on, on our testing example. So first of all, as usual, we are going to put the STM32F1 in the center of our example and we are going to use the library name GP Drive. So uh, first of all, we are going to connect our STM32F1 to um, um, a resistor and a, a, um, a red LED. So this resistor is for reducing the voltage applied to the red LED and to avoid the destruction of this LED. And we are going to connect this component to the port A pin number 0 and the port A pin number 0 will be set up as a digital output so it will turn on or off the LED. On the other hand we are going to connect the port A pin 10 to um, a, a switch uh, and this will be connected to a 3.3 volt and the, the port A pin 10 will be set up as a digital input. So now that we reviewed all the code and uh, all this uh, circuit we can go and take a look to the code. Before jumping to the content, if you like these videos and would like to stay tuned, just subscribe. Ok, so let's go further quickly to the circuit and take a look on it. So first of all, this is our STM32F1, which is first we do have the PA0 connected to the red LED, which is connected to the um, 220 um, resistor, which finally is connected to the ground. From the other side, we do have the 3.3 volt connected to the one side of the uh, push button, which is connected to the PA10, which is a digital um, input. Okay, quite a very simple uh, circuit. So now let's go to the program, which is also quite very simple too. Let's make the code a little bit bigger for you guys. So we are including for our coding our JP Drive library, and our setup PA0 will be a digital output, and PA10 will be a digital input. So from setup perspective, we are going to use two functions, very simple one. So if I put a digital input port A or PA10, uh, it means I will set up my PA10 as a digital input. So actually this is input like this. I will get the P. Okay. And if I put here digital output PA0, it means I will set up my function as a digital output. Quite very simple and straightforward. And then for the while, as you can see from coding perspective, we can really summarize it to only one line, but it's two function. The first function is called RJP or read general purpose. And this is where you put the um, port name and the pin number. And this one for read, of course, as the name says, it returns high or low, or in general speaking, it's a zero or one. On the other hand, we do have the other function, which is write JP or WJP. You have to put the port name and the pin number, and then if it's high or low. Of course, as you can see, this is write, so normally we are not returning nothing. And so if we combine together, so we do have first the write JP, which is which will write on the PA0 or the port A pin number 0, and it will write the value returned from reading the G JP of PA10. Okay, so let's save, build, and load the code, and take a look at what happens. Okay, so this is my push button, and normally if I push this button, this LED should be start to be on, and as soon as I release, it should go back to off. So, as you can see, 
the LED is going on as soon as I push and a going off as soon as I release. That was quite a very simple example, but showing how powerful the GPIO library and how simple you can use. Thank you.